They came from dimension X and they came to invade. Invaders from Dimension X is a small sci-fi war game by Herman Lutman. There's a game where the players controls a group of space soldiers fighting against monstrous aliens from another dimension. Uh, is your typical sci-fi uh, war gamey situations we have seen it many times in fiction in war games. Um, in this case, we have this time-tested idea uh, presented in a solitaire form. So the players controls the space soldiers, and then there is an AI that controls the aliens. And the behavior of the aliens, I can tell already, will be pretty chaotic and not always easy to predict, which to me works perfectly well with the theme. It really fits the theme because something that I like enormously about sci-fi, I would say one of the main reasons why I like sci-fi is that it exposes me to true cultural otherness. It exposes me to completely different ways of thinking that, of course, have been devised by human authors trying to imagine how culture would be from the point of view of people that are not us, that do not have our same background, that do not share our background, sometimes don't share our biology, don't share our physics, etc., etc., etc. And here, uh, the way in which the aliens behave, which is completely different from uh, what you expect and do all sorts of crazy stuff, uh, really fits the theme and really gives me a strong sci-fi uh, feel to it. So I can already tell that is an element that I like a lot. This is an, a design that also has a couple of other unusual things. Well, you have that uh, irregular or at least unpredictable uh, behavior from the aliens. Uh, another other interesting element is that there is no melee um, because the two parties just are too different from one another. They simply fight each other and don't you know, haven't figured out how to engage in melee. Another characteristic is that the alien have a strong philosophical difference from um, our way of doing warfare, so they do not kill. They consider that beneath them, what they do is they stun and paralyze. These are some of the unusual things. Oh, another thing. Uh, People fire in this game, there is no melee and there is unlimited range. The weapons are so good that you can fire potentially anywhere on the board from one side to the other. Only uh, the human player needs to have a line of sight. So the line of sight for the human player cannot go through obstacles, but the aliens can. Yes, the aliens can fire through obstacles, but they do have a penalty if they do so. Just to give you a sense of some of the unusual things that you find here. The human player controls soldiers represented by this type of chit here, um, where we have a combat factor, a defense factor, and movement factor. Also, you can have a JP, meaning that that's a jumping unit that works in specific ways. Also, you may have noticed that these units also have little labels. This is a scout, this is a marine squad, and then we have heavy weapons, logistics, and headquarters. Where are the headquarters? I wanted to show you one. I can't find one, of course. But there are headquarters, trust me. So you have many different groups that act in different ways. They have different actions, and I like that very much. The game as a, at the core is fairly simple, but thanks to the fact that different uh, human units can do different things, then you have more options because you can send them to do different things. However, I must say that usually there is one thing that everybody does very well. So you tend to use the scout to scout the headquarters to do leader stuff and so on and so forth, which makes perfect sense. But still, there are interesting challenges as you try to maximize the advantage, the benefits that come from the unit's uh, specific abilities. And then there are the times where you make tough decisions about using an ability a unit not to do what the unit does best, but because the situation is desperate in one way or the other. So, during a turn, uh, you activate your units and you can activate them to perform an action. The action can be to move up to the full movement allowance on the board. Clear terrain is one, difficult terrain is two movement points, and if you're moving along a road, then you only spend half a movement point per hex. So, movement classic, typical. You can attack, and we'll talk about attack later, and then you have specific special actions that are 
here. Actually, here we have it on the player rates by the side of the map. Special actions can be to build strong points, which actually is not a very useful action. To rally if a unit is stunned or paralyzed, then you roll a die. And you do rally, you do get to turn a paralyzed unit into a stun one and a stun one into an efficient one if you roll five or more. And yet you have bonuses that um, they come from having an adjacent logistics uh, or an adjacent headquarter and minus one if you have an adjacent alien unit. So you see you're trying to maximize the support that your headquarters and logistics can do. Resupply, when you attack, if you roll too many ones, your unit runs out of ammo, then you flip it to the other side. As you can see now, it's using pistols only. And if there is a logistics units that wants to lend a hand, then the, that can be done uh, to resupply a unit that ran out of ammo. Also, you can use a headquarter to request reinforcements. You roll a die and that determines whether or not you get to, uh, to add a new unit to the map. Speaking of the map, the map is a paper map. It's very thin. It's thinner than most paper maps that you see in war games these days, at least that is my impression. It is double-sided. It is not too big, but on the plus side, this is not too small either. It travels well, makes for a good travel sector game, which is how I'm playing it these days. I'm traveling, I am in Italy right now. I brought some sector games with me. This is one of the ones that they brought and played. It travels very well because it packs light. All you have really is the map, a player aid, a rule book, which is very thin, and some chits. Now, we talked about the actions for the for the humans. Let's have a look at some of the monsters. So the monsters, the aliens, are represented by these chits. The aliens go in a cup, and then you will draw them when you need to add them to the board. And their stats are an ID number. They have an ID number here that simply is used to identify them when certain game effects happen. For example, certain game effects applies to even numbers or numbers between eight and 12, that kind of stuff. And then you have a combat factor and a defense factor. You see there is a, there is a question, mark or question mark there. Now, usually the first time that you hit them, you use the printed defense value. But if you hit them without destroying them, then the question mark is a reminder of the fact that their armor value, the defense value, may change. So if you hit them the first time and destroy them, that's good, they're out of the game. If you hit them and do not destroy them, then you draw one of these markers here. I guess the energy that you poured in there may have weakened their shields or improved them, maybe has fed those shields. So you draw one of these markers and you put it by the alien that you just hit, and that indicates the new and permanent defense value for the rest of the game. So you can see there is quite a variety. The enemy can come out much stronger or much weaker from your probing shot. Well, you didn't miss a probing shot, you wanted to kill the guy, but that's what it happened, ended up being. How do you fight? How do you fire? As I said, there is infinite line of sight, uh, infinite range. As a human player, you control if you have line of sight. Then you roll a number of dice, which is equal to the combat factor here. So in this case, I would roll three dice, unless I have a modification, unless there is a a modifier there. For example, if I moved and fired, then I lose a die. But I get my full fire factor if I only fire and, and do not move before that. Or in any case, I don't combine movement and uh, and, uh, and firing. I get a plus one if I'm adjacent to the enemy. So you have different variety of modifiers that will add or reduce dice. You roll the dice and you score a hit for each number that you roll, which is higher than the defense of the opponent. In this case, I need to roll more than three. If you score three hits against an opponent, you destroy the opponent. So if I roll three numbers that are more than three on my three dice, or more than that, if I'm firing with a bigger unit, um, I destroy the unit. If I score zero hits, nothing happens. If I score one or two, that then is when I check to say, uh, well, I checked what the new value 
what the new armor value, what the new defense value is. They fire in the same way, they fire in the same way, meaning rolling a number of dice equal to their combat factor, um, trying to roll more than your than your defense, and they hit you if they roll more than your defense value. If and depending on how many hits you get, uh, you receive, you may get stunned, which gives you a penalty, as you can see here, for uh, movement and for combat. As you can see, those two penalties correspond to those two factors. Or depending on the number of hits, you may get paralyzed, in which case you simply have no movement or combat factors, so that is pretty bad. And that clearly prevents you from completing your objectives. Now, after you have activated and done your things, fired, etc., etc., the monsters activate, and you simply get to draw activation chits for them, and those activation chits will tell you what they do, you put them in a cup, and then they can do a lot of different stuff. And you know what? I will not tell you what that is. I will not want to spoil it for you. Suffice to say that they behave in really unusual ways, really alien ways. Um, they may fire, they may disappear, they may go dormant or wake up, a monolith may be dropped, 2001 Space Odyssey style, and then monolith uh, helps the aliens. There are just a bunch of effects, and I'm not gonna spoil too much to you. Again, something to say, just get ready to a type of warfare that is really different from traditional ones, as it should be, given the thing. Because if the aliens just behave like human beings, then... Uh, you are missing some of the unique potential that sci-fi has. And you have, in any case, a player aid that tells you what the aliens do. So, simply start playing, you draw a chat, and then you'll discover as you play what they do. That also increases your, your surprise factor and the fun and enjoyment factor. You continue like this until the end of the scenario, at which point you draw a chat from another pool, which is a pool of possible missions. You do not know what they are trying to really accomplish. So you draw a chat at the end of the game and you see if they have met their victory condition. Incidentally, you um, there are ways to remove some of these chats so you get a sense of what they're not trying to accomplish and what is left there. Something similar in truth, this sort of like inference you can have, of course, if you keep track of the action chats that they have drawn, that you have drawn for them and that have resulted in actions from them. Because action chits that have been drawn will not be drawn anymore. So that gives you a sense when they perform an action, what is left in the cup and what they can do next. In a sense, this is the one thing that makes the game a little less thematic because you really shouldn't be able to predict them too much. I'm almost wondering if there is, we could experiment with a variant where you draw a chat, you keep track of how many actions they took because um, the action chats also uh, create the countdown clock. It is when the action chats are over that you draw a mission chat for them. So I wonder if there could be a way of keeping track of how many turns you played each time that you draw an action chat, but then dumping it back there so that it's completely impossible to predict what they will do next because what they did is no indication of what is left for them to do next. Just an idea, just a thought in case you find that the game is not random enough. If you play this game, you know that there is a hint of irony in there. But who knows, maybe you still want really total complete alienness. That would be a way of achieving that. So at the end of the game, you try to complete your mission based on the circumstances of your scenarios and you try to prevent them from accomplishing their mission, which you have no idea what it will be. It will be determined in fact by a draw chat at the end of the game. You only have two scenarios, one for each map. You also have a mini campaign, but it's not huge, uh, huge variety there. And, and I've seen that actually the designer has posted at least another scenario. I'm sure more scenarios will be posted in the future. You can come up easily with your own scenarios. In conclusion, this is a really simple but fun and effective way. I played a game last week that was called The Chosen Few by Victory Point Games. It had the quality of the virtual being simple, but it was too simple. It felt too meatless. It felt like a tougher replacement for, uh, for a steak. Nothing wrong with it, but not flavorful enough. And it's hard to have a game that is very simple and still gives a lot of options and a lot of theme. Of theme. 
this game does that this game achieves that it is very simple it is very linear it could be an introductory war game for somebody who never played a war game in their life uh, and yet it has very flavorful and full of theme thanks to the special abilities of your units uh, which again they will tend to direct the actions for the units towards specific ways but give you interesting challenges as you're trying to use um, your units in ways that are not optimal in general but may be desirable under the circumstances so you have the tension there but you have that interesting element of units that specialize and at the same time it's not a long list of modifiers and factors that make things cumbersome so you have that element there which brings you a lot of theme that also comes together with interesting game mechanics and game options and you have the aliens which are incredibly mechanical mechanically incredibly thematic and thematically very, and mechanically very easy to uh, to handle because you do not need to memorize a lot of rules you need to memorize the fact that you pull a chip you read what happens here and you implement it there you memorized it you learned almost all that you need to know to handle the ai so a lot of work has been done here for you by um by the creation of the pool of activation chats for the enemy and by the actions that the enemies can perform uh, herman lutman i played at the designs by him in the past and he's he knows how to create a good pool of activation chits i played at the games by him and i remember precisely noticing this that he knows how to factor in a lot of story a lot of theme a lot of narrative in the action chit system which is a system that allows you unpredictability variety and again yet to factor in a lot of theme without a lot of rules for you to learn so invaders from dimension x is fun it's a fun challenging uh, solitaire game with a lot of variety a lot of random events maybe too much randomness on some players possibly of adding even more more randomness if you so wish and i guess there are other ways of tweaking the, the of tweaking the system but in truth the system is pretty tight so i do not know that it would be all that easy uh, i don't know for example to reduce the level of difficulty oh i guess you only use some of these aliens here when you create uh, the pool of aliens you draw from maybe you do not put the stronger ones in case you want to reduce the level of difficulty but it is a game that presents a reasonable challenge and what's most important a fun challenge i found it thematic i found that it has a good replay value even though not many scenarios are available the variety of actions that the aliens create and different combinations that will result from the activation of different chits will create different actions every time so that is great the scenarios may not be many but within each scenario there are a lot of different things that can happen the system makes sense it's fun and challenging usually you do need to work quite a little bit to soften up your your enemies hoping that you lower their you lower their armor and then you deliver the final blow at the times you send in a very powerful unit that can vaporize them in a single hit so you also have uh, interesting combat elements as you try to um, deliver powerful blows or try to deal with uh, with, a, with a string of minor blows and see if you can still achieve what you want to do that is to say the combat system is fun but it makes sense and again there are interesting options in there in general, Invaders from Dimension X is a soldier game that I enjoyed very much. It's a good war game with a lot of interesting challenges, all the good elements of war gaming challenges, good use of time, space, unit abilities, and so on and so forth. And all of this done in a small production that travels well, that is easy to play, and that is definitely a joy to play for somebody who enjoys classic sci-fi, such as myself. So I definitely enjoyed Invaders from Dimension X. Really, a good game.